I am super impressed by IKEA's Vidga curtain rail system. I insist on having a curtain that can open and close, and this rail works really well that way. The curtain glides like a dream. No complaints there. However, I'm not as crazy about their wall mount system for it. I mean, it's okay. It's just you can see the rail when the curtains open. In these two pictures from IKEA's website, the wall is white and the rail is white, so the curtain rail is somewhat camouflaged. It's just, it reminds me of this. And if you don't remember this, count yourself very lucky. I can't do it. So, what I'm going to use instead is an L bracket. This is my ugly fence with two L brackets on it. It's going to be my demo site, my test site. And then I need a piece of test wood. So I'm going to use a three and a half inch, commonly known as a one by four. And I'm going to take the attachment thingy, drop it on top of the washer, put a screw in it, drop the rail on top, and you're in. Nice and easy. A treat from Ikea for sure. All right. And then I just slide it onto my L brackets. See, this is my hack. The gap caused by the attachment thingy is just a hair bigger than the L bracket, which means there's a nice gap between the wood and the rail, so you can just slide it right on. This means, ta-da, this, then this, this, and finally, your curtain's up. That's my hat. Now that you know where I'm going with this, I'm going to reverse and hit a few details. You can put your L brackets wherever your stud is. None of this three inches, five inches from the trim. Just put them in a stud. They're going to be hidden by fabric anyway. The actual height of your bracket, it's probably not a bad idea to have some notion of what kind of a valance you want. Yeah, I know I said it. I'm sorry. You need a valance with this hack. It's the height, the hardware. All right, the length of your board. For this, you kind of need to know your stack back number. Now, the beauty of this rail system is you can get pretty damn exact on your stack back number. So one panel is coming in at seven and a quarter, two panels, we're looking at 13 and three quarters, okay? So to get your board length, you're gonna take the inside width of your window Measure that, get that number, and then you're going to take your two stack back numbers and add them to the window's width. That's the length of your board. Unless you want a little bit of fabric on top of your glass, then say three inches. In this case, you would minus six inches from your window with stack back number. Okay? What we're trying to avoid is this. You don't want to be able to see the inside of the window frame. That's just bad. No, 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 no. And then it's off to the lumber yard for some common lumber. Basically, any piece of crap will do, as long as it's straight. All right, the rail. What I would do is throw your board up, mark where your brackets are, take it back down, and then put in your attachment thingies. That's just so you don't put your brackets in the same spot, like I did. Of course I did that. Hm. All right, the actual board. This is the wall, pleats go here. Now, if you have trim, you probably want to put it in three quarters of an inch so that your fabric falls past the trim, right? If you don't have trim, I guess you can put it anywhere in here you like. I have a windowsill. So what I did was put it in an inch and a half, which wasn't quite enough. I'm okay with it, but technically it is a mistake. What I should have done is use the bigger board. That way it would have given the fabric lots of room to fly past my windowsill and I would have had lots of room for my pleats. But I'm kind of really stuck on the idea of having the absolute smallest valance possible, which is why I'm using three and a half inch. But it really doesn't leave my pleats much room. So what I did was add a half inch quarter round just to give my pleats that extra little bit of room. That's what you see in some of the pictures. All right. Now, for the actual cutting, I use this $5, I think it's a pipe saw. 
it worked. Uh, just make sure you put the end cap on when you're doing this cutting because you don't want the end cap to be poking out and messing with your valance. And we're ready for the curtain. Almost there. Okay, ideally, uh, ignore these bracket things, they're overkill. Ideally, you want a nice gap between your rail and your curtain so that you get a nice glide, right? Now, when I first hooked it the way Ikea suggested in this photo, basically putting the hook straight into the glider, I got this. Not only is it ugly, it didn't glide properly. And the whole point to me of the rail is the glide. So I'm just gonna burn that. So to fix that problem, uh, firstly, don't put your hook in the bottom row, put it in the next row up. Secondly, put those little earring thingies on your glider. It's easier to do down and then you just kind of slide them in. Um, that should give your curtain enough room so that it glides nice. I always forget this silly little thing. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so at the end, your curtain should look like this. If you need help hooking a curtain, I have another video. I'm not going to do that here. Okay, I did notice that the gap on this curtain is smaller than my blackout, which means maybe all of Ikea's curtains are a little bit different that way. Uh, you should check yours. Just doesn't hurt. And we're at the end. Okay. So the advantages of this hack is you can put your L bracket in a stud. The internet planes, you'll save 15% on your heating bill. If you're doing blackout, the light can't escape out the top. And finally, you can use it as a shelf. The disadvantage for some is you need a balance. I'm gonna do that in a separate video. And in that one, I'm going to do the Putin valance. No, I'm joking, joking. It's going to be way more basic than that. Take care.